Most people would be so focused on building the world's biggest and most powerful spacecraft that everything else could wait, but Elon Musk is not that type of guy. On the other hand, he has been planning more than one next generation of Starship. Let's see what he has planned for the next generation rocket. Starship 2 is being developed by SpaceX. According to Musk, the next generation SpaceX rocket, which might arrive some years after the Starship and be super heavy, could be a full 18 meters wide or double the diameter of its predecessor. Add in a height increase and you have theoretical Starship 2.0. What of 8 times the surface area and 8 times the propellant tank volume, requiring around 8 times the thrust and making the vehicle 8 times the weight of Starship? Before we continue, please smash that like button, share, and comment on this video. And put the notification bell on so you don't miss our next video. Assuming that the Starship successor maintains its optimal height to width ratio, the end result is implausible but intriguing to consider. Nonetheless, the vehicle would be roughly 18 meters in diameter and 236 meters tall, which is more than twice as tall as the Saturn V. That's as tall as New York's Woolworth Building or three quarters of the height of Paris's Eiffel Tower. An 18 meter diameter would also make it the widest rocket ever built, with Saturn V's measuring 10 meters wide and the Soviet Union's N1 block, the first stage measuring an impressive 17 meters in diameter. A very approximate estimate would put Starship 2.0's gross fueled mass at 40,000 metric tons at its widest point. The Starship 2.0 upgrade may be able to launch over 1,000 tons each launch, implying that a Starship version 2 would have the payload diameter and cargo capacity to launch an entire Orion satellite. With four launches, the, the parts for a 4,000-ton interplanetary Orion may be sent into orbit. The large payload of a future Generation 2 SpaceX Starship could also deliver factories and complex production systems to the moon. Developing nuclear pulse propulsion systems on the moon would eliminate nuclear radiation problems from our ground launch project Orion. Developing nuclear pulse propulsion might allow for manned interplanetary gravitational lens range and interstellar expeditions. With this larger and more powerful starship, Musk will be able to reach his Mars targets faster. The ability to hoist more goods per trip will speed up the delivery of supplies to colonists by lowering the number of journeys required. Rowe expects the number of passengers aboard Starship 2.0 to increase with each batch. The current passenger capacity of the Starship is expected to be 100. However, Starship 2.0 may have a passenger capacity of up to 1,000, lowering the length of the waiting list for potential voyagers. Travel time will be reduced, allowing Musk's passengers to reach Mars sooner than projected. This will surely make the journey more bearable. Starship is presently powered by Raptor engines. For initial test flights, SpaceX will use 33 Raptor 2 engines to power the very heavy first stage and 6 on the Starship's upper stages. If SpaceX used the current generation of Raptors to power such a massive rocket, the booster would require at least 100 Raptors just to lift off. Musk also stated on Twitter that while Raptor 2 has enormous improvements in every regard, a thorough design network is required for the engine that can genuinely support multiplanetary life. Raptor will not be the name. In other words, SpaceX will launch an engine that will be superior to anything previously launched. This engine will be a significant step towards SpaceX's ultimate objective of transforming humanity into multiplanetary species. It's exciting to consider what this ship could accomplish. If it is successful, it may be anything you can think of. However, we all know that designing isn't difficult. It is difficult to create. What size will Starship 2.0 have? The minimum distance between Earth and Mars is around 54.6 million kilometers and Musk wishes to send 1 million people to the Red Planet, but in addition to individuals, Musk must transport a large number of other items. This is a costly procedure, therefore Musk must find the most cost-effective means to transport people between planets. This is when Starship seem to assess the size of Starship 2.0. Let's have a look at the current Starship generation, the Starship 1.0. The steel alloy spaceship and its ultra-heavy boosters tower 120 meters above the Saturn V, which transported people to the moon. In terms of power, the rocket's cargo holds 9-meter diameter could readily store massive celestial observatories. Nothing like that has ever happened in the space sector. The B-7 successors will be powered by 33 Raptor engines. Starship 1.0 will be capable of launching 100 tons into orbit on a fully reusable basis, but Musk claims that the next-generation system, named Starship 2.0, will be twice the size of the vessel that will take passengers and cargo to the moon and Mars. Musk made the remarks in response to an inquiry from one of his many Twitter followers about his future plans for a larger version of the Starship. It suggests that Starship 2.0 will be approximately 240 meters, or 775 feet tall, and 18 meters, or 60 feet broad. With Saturn V's massive first stage spanning 10 meters wide and the Soviet Union's N1 having a first stage measuring an astonishing 17 meters in diameter, this diameter would also make it the largest rocket ever built. At its widest point, Starship 2.0 would have 8 times the surface area and 8 times the propellant tank volume, requiring roughly 8 times the thrust and weighing 8 times as much as Starship 1.0. They should rename the Starship 8.0 at this point. 
that would imply that the next generation of SpaceX Super Heavies would be capable of delivering payloads weighing up to 800,000 kilograms, or almost 1.764 million pounds, to low Earth orbit, the Moon, and Mars. Incredible. This payload would be about twice the size of the Sea Dragon's payload. The Sea Dragon was a two-stage, sea-launched orbital Super Heavy liftline vehicle that was conceptualized in 1962. That was quite a mouthful. While working for Aerojet, Robert Trow led the project. It could have carried a payload of 550 tons. A rocket as huge as this certainly requires an extremely powerful engine, and we're talking about the Starship 2.0. It would have been 150 meters tall and 23 meters in diameter, obviously. 60 Raptors and 1.0 would be required to assist this rocket in taking flight. Fortunately, the entire world has seen the Raptor 2.0. Each Raptor 1 engine produces 185 metric tons of force. Raptor 2 has just begun production, and it will be capable of 230 tons or more than half a million pounds of force, according to Elon on Twitter, claiming the improved performance of the next Raptor version, therefore employing Raptor 2. Obviously, less than 60 engines are required to lift off, but why is version 2 required? In many circumstances, a larger Starship is preferable. During a debate with Jeff Bezos over the Artemis contract, Musk stated that refueling Starship for lunar landings will require eight launches, or else there won't be enough fuel to go there, making a crew mission to Mars a hundred times more complicated. However, because of its vast size, a larger Starship 2.0 that can supply all of the fuel will greatly ease matters. Before we finish all of the amenities to service the life of a hundred volunteers, the Starship itself must become a fortress to dwell in for an extended period of time. It will be extremely difficult for the first footsteps on Mars to establish a self-sustaining colony. We can't do manual labor on Mars like the ancient Egyptians did when they erected the pyramids. We shall perish under the harsh conditions of Mars. The Starship will be required to transport heavy machinery such as iron and steel or excavators and even civil airplanes. Finally, the large cargo of a SpaceX Starship of the future Generation 2 may launch factories and complex manufacturing systems. With this larger and more powerful Starship, Musk will be able to reach his Martian targets faster. The ability to hoist more goods per trip will allow colonizers to receive supplies more quickly by minimizing the number of journeys required. The economic consideration is critical because you don't build a large rocket only to have full reusability and thriftiness. The usage of propellant would reduce the cost of each Starship, 1.0 launch to only $2 million. However, keep in mind that one journey of the Starship 2.0 is, is comparable to eight travels of the existing version. Estimating the overall launch cost of Starship 2, it might be roughly $7.2 million for fuel and about $1.2 million for support operations, for a total of $8.4 million. The total cost would be $16 million, so Starship 2.0 will essentially have the same expenses for the same amount of payload. The number of passengers in Starship 2.0 will increase with each batch. The current passenger capacity of the Starship is estimated to be 100. However, 2.0 might have a passenger capacity of up to 1,000, contributing to significant cost savings. The estimated capability of the spaceship in terms of mass to orbit is critical to cost efficiency. When combined with SpaceX's objective of fully reusing each rocket and booster, Musk compares it to commercial air travel. So when will Starship 2 be developed? That is an open topic considering SpaceX's focus is now in orbit. SpaceX has conducted several high-altitude flight tests with Starship prototypes, but the company's next major goal is to enter space. The milestone was supposed to be reached. Last year, development progress was slowed, and an orbital flight test is also on the horizon. SpaceX requires a license from the FAA, or Federal Aviation Administration, which is anticipated to finish a major environmental review in about a month. Even before considering the unproven concepts of orbital propellant, refilling, and full quick reusability that are central to the entire system, Starship is incredibly ambitious. The rocket is 120 meters in height and is theoretically capable of generating up to 7,590 tons of thrust at sea level. It is higher, heavier, bigger, and more powerful than any other launch vehicle in history. Raptor 33 has two engines, power, and a very hefty booster, which is more than any other rocket. SpaceX claims that once optimized, Starship can launch up to 150 tons into low Earth orbit while still recovering the orbital spacecraft and suborbital booster for reuse. CEO Elon Musk has indicated that Starship reuse will eventually take hours, allowing for many flights per day for each ship and launcher and lowering the marginal cost of each launch to a few million dollars. Falcon 9, SpaceX's workhorse rocket, employs simpler. With only 10 Merlin 1D engines, Starship 39 Raptors produce around 10 times less thrust at liftoff and can launch approximately 11% as much payload to orbit without increasing its upper stage. Even yet, Musk claimed in mid-2020 that the marginal cost of a Falcon 9 launch was $15 million, which was remarkably low but still a stark indication of how far our Starship has to go. 
Simply getting the Starship into orbit is a significant challenge. Successfully recovering a Starship or a Super Heavy after the fact may be an even greater difficulty, and it will not be completely shown until the rocket can reliably reach orbit, until it can routinely recover ships and boosters after orbital launches, until it can routinely recover ships and boosters after orbital launches, and even if early prototypes are recovered, there's no guarantee they'll be reusable until reusability is shown. Every upper level of a Starship will be functionally expendable, whether Elon Musk wants it to be or not. When asked what is expended in expendable mode, he tweeted, Expendable upper stage may or may not fly, but it is an option. He most likely implies that SpaceX may or may not create a Starship upper stage, designed specifically for disposable missions. A stage like this would most likely take Starship, eliminate everything unnecessary, and lower its mass as much as feasible. Musk has proposed something similar before, noting that SpaceX could develop a lightened version of Starship, with no heat shield or fins slash lakes for expendable interplanetary launches. But on the contrary, SpaceX's Starbase factory is already building multiple internationally expendable Starships. Ships 26 and 27 feature no thermal protection, has no heat shield tiles, and will not be fitted with flaps, making them impossible to recover or reuse. But they are more likely than not to be recovered. They will be utilized to put other critical Starship technologies to the test, such as orbiting, replenishing, and cryogenic, management that is fluid. Meanwhile, SpaceX's multi-billion dollar contract with NASA to utilize Starship to return astronauts to the moon centers around a depot ship variant that will store propellant in orbit but will not be able to return to Earth. The first few Starship moon landers may likewise be functionally expendable, with each capable of only one man landing. In short, SpaceX has broad plans to construct Starship variations that are either entirely expendable or can only be reused in space. Indeed, with its potential, SpaceX's Starship has a variety of payload possibilities, including the ability to utilize the stainless steel spacecraft as a reusable rocket or as an expendable one. SpaceX updated the Starship section of its website in early 2023, announcing that an expendable version of the rocket will be able to deliver up to 250 metric tons to low Earth orbit in a single launch. The next most capable expendable rocket, Saturn V, could launch up to 118 tons to LEO for $1 to $2 billion every launch. Unsurprisingly, SpaceX publicly advertising the expendable performance of Starship reveals that the corporation is evaluating all of the capabilities. Its new launch mechanism will have major expendable capabilities, which will be built piece by piece across dozens of launches. The International Space Station is approximately 420 tons in weight. Two expendable bending Starships could provide more usable mass to LEO, which would be genuinely revolutionary. If SpaceX can make Starship launches more frequent and routine, at least three further Starship variations make sense and are likely to be scheduled soon. The first configuration is the Starship Freight Arrangement. The cargo design will not have windows because it will be completely enclosed and capable of carrying over 100 tons of freight. Its payload fairing will be 8 meters wide with an expanded capacity capable of handling payloads up to 22 meters long. There is currently no other spacecraft of that size in operation. Companies might use this feature to launch whole constellations of satellites into low Earth orbit in a single launch. According to the user manuals for SpaceX's Starship, the outside diameter of the conventional Starship payload fairing is 9 meters, resulting in the biggest usable payload volume of any present or in-development rocket. The Starship payload fairing is a clamshell structure into which the payload is fitted. Once integrated, the clamshell fairing remains closed until the payload is ready to deploy. A Starship will be displayed in low-Earth orbit beside another Starship designed solely to carry propellant, allowing for long-distance travels through deep space carrying over 100 tons of cargo. The maximum mass to orbit is based on parking orbit propellant transfer, which allows for a significant increase in payload mass. Then there's the Chomper Satellite Launch Vehicle, which is used to launch satellites. Instead of a standard jettisonable nose, the Starship will have a massive cargo door that will open to release payloads and close upon re-entry. Payloads are connected directly into the Starship's payload bay through cone fairing rather than clean room, necessitating the purging of the payload bay with temperature-controlled ISO Class 8 clean air to launch multiple Starlink satellites. The cargo entrance will be replaced by a slot and dispenser rack, the mechanism of which has been compared to a PEZ dispenser, candy dispenser, and eventually a propellant depot version. Starship's lunar lander derivative, Starship, has a vital human landing system for the Artemis program. The lander, a current NASA lunar exploration program, is accomplished by Starship tankers and Starship propellant depot versions. Tankers deliver propellant to a depot until it is full, at which point the depot fuels the Starship. As a result, the lunar lander has enough thrust to enter lunar orbit. The crew of the Orion spacecraft is then launched using the Space Launch System. After docking with the Starship, the crews transfer into the lander, and the lunar cruise is transported back to Orion and returned to Earth. In short, the Starship rocket can carry a lot, but its payload and cargo will be determined by the agreement with the agency or corporation that demands it. It would begin propelling itself upwards. And that would be the end of today's episode. 
Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments box below because everyone's support inspires us to make better videos. And for that, we sincerely thank you. We hope to see you again soon.